Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Listings API video series. My name is Federico and I work as a solutions architect at Amazon Selling Partner Developer Services. This video series is intended for any Selling Partner API developer that wants to integrate the listings use case to their product. It is also a great resource for developers that currently support listings through XML and flat files and are considering migrating to the new optimized solution that Listings API offers. Finally, developers that are already using Listings API but want to improve their solution might also find these videos relevant. In this first episode, we are going to focus on what listing on Amazon means. We will cover the basic concepts that apply to all Amazon listings, regardless of the technology being used. We will explain how the data you send to Amazon reflects on the website and affects the buyer experience. Finally, we will explain how to achieve high quality listings. Let's get started. As we like to say at Amazon, we are peculiar, and so is listing on Amazon. One of the peculiarities regarding listings is the concept of ASIN, the Amazon Standard Identification Number. An ASIN is a 10-character long identifier assigned to products. This number is unique to products in the Amazon catalog, which means that the same item even if it's being offered by different selling partners, will have the same ASIN. The stock keeping unit, or SKU, on the other hand, is a value that is unique to the selling partner's contribution. Different selling partners, for example 10, might decide to sell the same product, and this will result in 10 different SKUs. As the image on the right illustrates, Building an ASIN's data is a process that receives input from the contributions from all the different selling partners that decide to list that item. In the next slides, we will dive a bit deeper into how this process works. In this table, we can see which data belongs to the ASIN and which one belongs to the SKU and can therefore be more controlled by the selling partner. Since the ASIN combines information from different contributions, it stands at the Amazon catalog level. Any customer or selling partner that queries the Amazon catalog will get information for the ASIN. The SKU stands at the selling partner catalog level, which means that the data is specific to them. So which data do the ASIN and the SKU define? The ASIN defines product details, attributes that belong to the product, like brand, description, size, etc. For example, regardless of the seller that is offering the item, the brand will not change. And while different selling partners might have different preferences in terms of which images to show or which information to include in the bullet points, Amazon will consolidate this data and generate a unified view. This way, customers browsing the marketplace will receive the best possible experience. Selling partners have, of course, control over the sales terms, and thus they belong to the SKU. Each selling partner will be able to define the condition of the item they are offering, like new or used, the price, inventory, etc. Finally, items in the Amazon catalog and in the selling partner catalog can have different states. ASINs can be discoverable or non-discoverable, which defines the ability of customers to find them on the Amazon marketplace. If an ASIN doesn't meet the minimum standards, like when it's missing mandatory data, Amazon will prevent it from being discovered. SKUs, on the other hand, can be viable or non-viable. If a selling partner's listing indicates that inventory is zero, then the item will not be viable from that selling partner. However, the item or ASIN 
might be viable from other setting partners that have positive inventory, meaning that those SKUs are viable. When it comes to the buyer experience, both ASIN and SKU play a role. The product detail page shows a unified ASIN view with the product facts, like brand, description, and images. All buyers will see the same information. Additionally, Amazon will select for each buyer a featured offer. This offer is the one Amazon considers to be the best for that specific customer based on different factors like shipping cost. Additional offers from other selling partners will also be displayed in case the buyer prefers an alternative. One frequent question from selling partners submitting listings to Amazon is how to influence the data that is displayed at the ASIN level. What's behind the process that selects which data ends up in the unified ASIN view? How does it work? What is taken into consideration? This process, called matching, reconciles data from all selling partners' contributions to generate the ASIN data. Some factors that are considered in order to select the data are the quality of the submitted information, the brand ownership of the selling partner, and more. Something important to mention is that Amazon owns the matching process and data selection, and selling partners can't directly influence this. However, submitting high-quality data increases the chances of getting their information selected. So, how does a high-quality listing look like? First of all, mandatory attributes are present. Amazon defines the minimum required data and it is important to include all of it in listing submissions. Product data should also be complete based on the category. While some attributes are optional and omitting them would not result in a listing submission being rejected, ideally selling partners should include as much information as possible. This positively improves the buyer experience, which at the end of the day is Amazon's main goal. Data also has to be accurate and descriptive and meet Amazon standards. For example, images, size, and content has to adhere to Amazon requirements. Following these recommendations will help you achieve better results. So that was it for our first episode. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. In the description of the video, you will find links to useful resources for the topics we covered today. In our next episode, we will introduce you the listings API and navigate the different building blocks that are available to selling partner API developers. Please join us 